Read your cards carefully. He's knocked out. Colorless to 2000 Dragon. The middle Fairy era is 2002 to 2013. Fighting. Sound it out. Psychic. The pre-modern era Lightning. is 2013 Water. to 20. You must immediately the advance. Era is 2020 to present. All right, let's get started. Hi, I'm Neil. I'm Katie. And we are Higher Education. In this video, we're going to demonstrate setting up to play a game. So the first thing you're supposed to do is of course select a deck, but then you sit down and you actually have to shake hands with your opponent, and that is a part of the rules. Then you do a coin flip to decide who goes first, and the winner of the coin flip decides who goes first. So go ahead and call it. Heads. All right, it is heads. Do you wanna go first or second? Um, I will go first. Okay. Now we're going to shuffle our decks. All right, once our decks are shuffled, then we are going to draw the top seven cards of our deck. Seven. We have to check to see if we have any basic Pokemon. I do. Do you have basics, yes. Katie? If not, we need to take a mulligan. In this case, we both have basics. So we're going to choose a Pokemon to place face down in the active spot. And then from the remaining basics in your hand, if there are any, you can choose up to five to place face down on the bench. I am going to place one. Are you I going to place any? I am not going to place any. Okay. And then the last thing we need to do is place prize cards. So in this case, Katie and I are gonna place four prize cards for the sake of time, but you can place up to six prize cards, which makes the game a little longer. Especially if you're playing with no rule box Pokemon. And finally, once setup is complete, we flip our cards face up and we begin play. All right, let's get started. Call it. Heads. It is tail, so I'll go first. Draw seven cards. I have a mulligan. I do too. Okay. Whoa. In this video, I'm gonna demonstrate playing Pokemon from the hand to the bench. I already have a Pokemon in my active spot. I have five open spaces on the bench. It's important to note that there are only five spaces on the bench. So once they're full, you cannot play any more Pokemon onto the bench unless a spot opens up. You cannot just remove Pokemon from your bench by choice. So I have Darmanitan in my hand, who's actually a stage one, so I cannot play him directly to the bench. I have to have the corresponding basic. So I'll set him aside. I have six basic Pokemon in my hand. I have two Salandit, two Turtonator, and two Darumaka. I have to choose, and I don't have to play all of them to my bench, but let's say that I want to. I have to choose which ones I'm going to leave in my hand because I cannot put more than five Pokemon down. I can put all five down if I want to though. Now my bench is full. I'm not able to add this last Turtonator to the bench. He just has to remain in my hand. All right, in this video, we're gonna demonstrate Pokemon evolution. So in this case, I have two Machop that are already in play. I'm gonna go ahead and add a third Machop to my bench from my hand. Now I have three Machoke and a Machamp that are all in my hand. And I can evolve the two Machop that were already in play. I cannot evolve this Machop because it is its first turn in play. 
but it's important to note that I can evolve as many eligible Pokemon as I want during my turn, assuming that I have the correct corresponding cards. Now these two Machoke have just entered play, so it's their first turn in play. So even though I have Machamp, which is the corresponding stage two for these two Machoke, I am not able to evolve anymore this turn because all three of my Pokemon in play are now on their first turn in play. So I'm gonna go ahead and end my turn and throw it over to Katie. All right, so here in my turn, um, I have a Porygon, which is a basic Pokemon um, in my active spot. And here in my hand, I have a Porygon Z, which is the stage two of Porygon. Um, but I don't have Porygon two, which is the stage one. Um, I do, however, have a trainer card in my hand called Rare Candy. It is an item. Um, this card says, choose one of your basic Pokemon in play. If you have a stage two card in your hand that evolves from that Pokemon, put that card on the basic Pokemon. This counts as evolving that Pokemon. You can't use this card during your first turn or on a basic Pokemon that was just put into play. So I'm going to use that to evolve straight to Porygon Z. So now I have a stage two in my active spot and that will end my turn. In this video, we are going to demonstrate attaching energy. So the most important thing to remember about attaching energy is that you can only attach one energy card per turn. So in my hand, I have two different energy cards. I have a special energy card, twin energy, and then I also have a basic fire energy card. Um, so now I have to make the choice as to which energy card I'm going to attach to my Buffalant. Um, and I am going to go ahead and attach Twin Energy. Um, it says, as long as this card is attached to a Pokemon that isn't a V or GX Pokemon, it provides two colorless energy. If it is attached to a V or GX Pokemon, it provides one colorless energy instead. So, Bufalon is not a special um, Pokemon, so it provides two colorless energy. I cannot attack. Um, so I'm going to end my turn. All right. Okay, so I drew a card. Now I have three basic fire energy and one special fire energy in my hand. I can only attach one of them per turn using the normal energy attachment rule. Some cards, however, let you accelerate your energy attachment by getting around the energy attachment rule. So a very popular card in the old format, and actually a card that was heavily featured in the 2019 World Championship, was Welder. So Welder is a supporter card that says, attach up to two fire energy cards from your hand to one of your Pokemon. If you do, draw three cards. So those two cards that I get to attach with the effect of Welder do not count against my one energy attachment per turn. And then I also get to draw with the effect of Welder, but that's not really important for this demonstration. Now I have a basic fire energy and a burning energy that I can attach. I'm gonna choose to attach the burning energy, which is a special energy that if I discard it with the effect of an attack, it goes back onto the Pokemon that it's attached to. So it goes to the discard pile and then immediately reattaches to the same Pokemon after I discard it. So then I'm gonna use Flamethrower, 90 damage, discard an energy attached to this Pokemon. I'm gonna discard Burning Energy, which is then gonna go back to attach onto Mag Cargo. And I was able to attach three energy and, atta and attack in a single turn because of the effect of Welder. Those types of cards that allow energy acceleration are valuable, but rare. So usually you'll be attaching one energy card per turn, no matter what. Okay, in this video demonstration today, we are going to go over some of the different uh, types of trainer cards. There are lots of types of trainer cards um, and they do lots of different things. Um, and each type of trainer has a different set of rules that goes with it. Um, so we're gonna go over some of those things today. So um, in my area of play, we've got Dragonite um, in my active spot and we've got a Fletchling here on my bench. Both have damage on them. 
um, and I don't have any other Pokemon. So if Neil is able to knock out both of these Pokemon, which only have a little bit of HP left each, then he's gonna win the game automatically. So I need to try to heal this damage if I can. So in my hand, I have a trainer card called Potion. Um, it is an item card. You can play as many item cards um, as you want per turn, um, unless for some reason they say that you can only play one. Um, so I'm gonna play Potion to heal 30 damage from Dragonite. He has 120 damage on him, so 120 minus 30 is 90. So I would take the 100 off, put a 50 on, and two more tens to um, equal 90 damage. And then um, I am going to go ahead and play this trainer card. It is a stadium card. Um, you can only play one stadium card per turn, per, look, per your turn. And when you play this card, if there's another stadium card in play, that card gets discarded to the owner's discard pile. So Neil already has a stadium card in play. So he has to discard that when I play this one. Um, it's called Pokemon Center. Once during each player's turn, that player may heal 20 damage from one of his or her benched Pokemon. So I'm going to place that there uh, to remind us that it's in play for both of us. I'm going to go ahead and use the effect of Pokemon Center and heal 20 damage from Fletchling. Um, and then that ends my turn. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get started. I also have quite a bit of damage on my two Pokemon in play. I have a Lickalicky in the active spot and Masquerain on the bench. So I'm gonna play a type of item card that is a tool. This one is Healing Scarf. So Healing Scarf, as a tool, it actually attaches to the one of your Pokemon in play. It can be on the active spot or on the bench, but I'm gonna go ahead and attach it to Lickalicky, who's inactive. Whenever you attach an energy card from your hand, to the Pokemon this card is attached to, heal 20 damage from it. So I'm going to attach double colorless energy to Lickalicky. Now it's important to note that Healing Scarf says when you attach an energy card, not energy. So it only counts once for double colorless energy because double colorless energy is a single energy card, even though it provides two energy. So in this case, I get to heal 20 damage. For the effect of healing scarf so 100 minus 20 is 80 so 50 60 70 80 licka licky still has 80 damage that's not great so i'm going to play pokemon center lady pokemon center lady is a supporter card supporter cards were introduced in 2002 they're powerful cards but you can only play one supporter per turn Pokemon Center Lady says heal 60 damage and remove all special conditions from one of your Pokemon. So in this case, I'm going to remove the 50 and the 10, leaving Lickalicky with only 20 damage. And since Lickalicky is my active Pokemon, he finally has some energy attached to him. I really want to prevent him from getting knocked out. I also have a potion that I'm going to play. So... Potion is an item card, so I can play as many as I want. Heal 30 damage from one of your Pokemon. Lickalicky only has 20, but that's fine. I can just heal all that damage. And then finally, I can also use the effect of Pokemon Center because stadium cards affect both players. Once during each player's turn, that player may heal 20 damage from one of his or her bench Pokemon. So Masquerade has 50 damage. I'm gonna heal 20 by taking it down from 50 to 30 and that's it so we've demonstrated item cards tool cards stadium cards and supporter cards note that i have another supporter fisherman in my hand and again because i've already played a supporter this turn i cannot play another one in this demonstration we are going to show um what it looks like to discard cards um, other than when a pokemon is knocked out and put in the discard pile so it is time for my Dark Quilt Alava to go ahead and attack. Um, and I'm going to use Rushing Magma. I have the required fire energy attached. Um, it does 20 times. So it says discard the top five cards of your deck. If there are fewer than five cards in your deck, discard all of them. 
This attack does 20 damage for each fire energy you discarded in this way. So I have to discard to use the attack. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so the last two were both fire energy. Um, so it does 20 times the number of fire energy. 20 times two is 40. So I do 40 damage to Dark Cadabra. Okay, so it's my turn. I'm gonna go ahead and draw a card. I am going to use Dark Cadabra's power, Matter Exchange. Once during your turn, before your attack, you may discard a card from your hand in order to draw a card. This power can't be used if Dark Cadabra is asleep, confused, or paralyzed. So I'm gonna discard this fire energy in order to draw a card. That's not terribly helpful. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and play Computer Search. Another way that you can discard cards is do, through the effect of a trainer. Computer Search says discard two of the other cards from your hand in order to search your deck for any card and put it into your hand. Shuffle your deck afterwards. So one, two, and playing Computer Search also makes me discard cards. So then I'm going to search. I do not have to show it in this case, but I'm gonna go ahead and it is Dark Alakazam. So I'm gonna evolve Dark Kadabra into Dark Alakazam. And then if I were playing any other trainers, such as Big Malasada here, it would immediately go into my discard pile just by playing it. So those are some other ways that cards can be discarded other than when a Pokemon is knocked out. In this video, we're gonna demonstrate retreating and a couple of different ways that that can go. So every Pokemon has a retreat cost down in the bottom. In this case, Electivire has a retreat cost of three. Retreat cost is always represented in colorless energy, meaning that any energy can count towards the retreat cost. It's also really important to note that you can only retreat once per turn and you can only pay a retreat cost with energy attached to that Pokemon. So Electivire's retreat cost is three. He has one lightning energy and a double colorless energy attached. So that's a total of three energy. So I'm gonna discard them in order to retreat him. And I have to have someone on my bench in order to retreat. So I'm gonna advance Regigigas. Now I can't attack, so I'm gonna go ahead and end my turn and Katie's gonna demonstrate a different type of retreating. Okay, so during my turn, um, I would want to go ahead and retreat Jolteon because for two reasons. One, he does not have the required energy to use any of his attacks and Polyrath does have required energy. Um, the cool thing about Jolteon is he does not have a retreat cost. So I get to retreat him for free, but it does still count as retreating, even though I haven't discarded any energy. So I'm gonna move him to my bench and move Polyrath up. And then I can go ahead and continue with my turn and attack with Steamroll um, because I have the necessary energy. In this video, we're gonna demonstrate a couple of different types of Pokemon abilities. Abilities are essentially any effect that the Pokemon card can use that are not attacks. So they usually have a name, but they do not have a cost. So that's a key defining feature of an ability is that it does not have a, a cost, an energy cost like an attack does. So in this case, I have a Blastoise down. Blastoise has the Pokemon power, Rain Dance. As often as you like, during your turn, before your attack, you may attach one water energy to one of your water Pokemon. This doesn't use up your one energy card attachment for the turn. This power can't be used if Blastoise is asleep, confused, or paralyzed. Okay, so there's a bit to unpack there. First, Rain Dance is an active ability. Even though it's called a Pokemon power, it's still under the category of abilities. There's lots of things, polka bodies, other things that are all considered abilities. It's an active ability in that I have to choose when to use it. And in this case, 
Blastoise's ability cannot be used if he's affected by certain special conditions, which are usually the rotation conditions as opposed to the marker condition. So if he's affected by any rotation condition, he cannot use the ability. He is not, so I'm going to go ahead and use the ability to attach the four water energy from my hand all to Blastoise at once. Because, again, his ability says as often as you like during your turn before your attack. Some abilities have a limitation that they can only be used once per turn or sometimes even once per game. So it's very important to read them carefully. Now, I have another Blastoise in my hand and I have a War Turtle on my bench, but I'm not able to play this ability or this Blastoise because of Katie's Aerodactyl's ability. So Aerodactyl has an ability, um, it, it is labeled as a Pokemon power, it's called Prehistoric Power. No more evolution cards can be played. This power stops working while Aerodactyl is asleep, confused, or paralyzed. So that goes for both sides of the game. Um, so it affects Neil, he can't evolve any other Pokemon this entire game. Um, while Aerodactyl is in play, and if I had anyone on my bench, I could not evolve them either. Now, it does have the condition that if Aerodactyl is asleep, confused, or paralyzed, any of the rotation um, special conditions, he cannot use this power, so then if he is asleep, confused, or paralyzed, anyone could evolve as many Pokemon as they are able to. And then the important distinction about prehistoric power is that it's passive. It's always on. Katie doesn't choose to activate it. It is in effect as long as Aerodactyl is in play. In this video, we're going to demonstrate a couple of different types of attacks that can happen. Attacks are broad and varied, so we won't be able to demonstrate them all. But I'm going to go ahead and use my Dodrio. Dodrio's try attack takes two colorless energy. So the first thing I need to do is make sure that I have two colorless energy. Colorless energy can be any energy, but I actually have a double colorless energy attached. Double colorless energy counts for two energy, but only colorless. In this case, that's fine, because Dodrio Tri Attack only requires two colorless energy. Now, it's a 60x attack. That means that it's going to do 60 damage times something. In this case, the text of the attack tells me, flip three coins, this attack does 60 damage times the number of heads. Usually what you do in the Pokemon trading card game is flip the same coin three times rather than flipping three separate coins, but you can do either, as long as you keep track of your results. So I am going to attack using try attack. One tails, two tails, one heads. One heads. So, try attack does 60 damage, and attacking is always the last thing you do on your turn. If you attack, it automatically ends your turn immediately after the attack is resolved. So, it's Katie's turn. All right, so I would start my turn by drawing a card, and I am going to go ahead and attack. Um, I'm going to use Fire Blast, and it uses four energy. It only requires one fire energy, um, and then three colorless energy. So I would have to have one fire and three of any other type of energy attached. Um, in this case, I do have four fire energy. Um, so I'm going to use Fire Blast, because I have the necessary energy. It does 120 damage, but it also says discard an energy attached to this Pokemon. So in order to use the attack, I have to discard or the attack does not do anything. So there I've discarded a fire energy and dealt 120 damage to Dodrio. And in this case, Dodrio only has 100 HP, so he would be knocked out. In this scenario, we are going to go over what happens when a Pokemon is knocked out. So it is my turn um, and it's the phase of my turn where I can attack. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use low kick uh, which does 20 base damage. Uh, Venusaur is not weak or resistant to fighting type, so it does normal damage. 
And if you notice, Venusaur already has 80 damage on him and he only has 100 HP. So 20 plus 80 is 100. He is maxed out of his HP, so he's knocked out. Um, now I get to take a prize card because I knocked him out. And now Neil is going to resolve the knockout on his end. Okay, so there's no point in putting more damage counters on because Venusaur is about to get discarded. So I'll just move the damage counters off. And one thing we want to demonstrate is that Venusaur, Ivysaur, Bulbasaur, all the energy attached to them, and a tool in this instance, all of these cards get discarded because of Venusaur's knockout. Then I have to immediately advance someone from my bench even before we move into Pokemon checkup. I only have one Pokemon, so that is an easy choice. I'm gonna advance Clefable, but immediate advancement is very important. In the 2019 World Championship match, one of the players was actually assessed a two prize card penalty for failing to immediately advance his Pokemon after a warning from the judges. So immediate advancement is a very important point after a knockout. So in this video demonstration today, we are going to show what happens when a rule box Pokemon is knocked out. So you can see we all have um, special Pokemon on our um, active spots and on our bench. Um, so it is my turn to attack. So I'm going to use my EV V Max to attack Charizard GX. Um, but before we do that, we need to address that these special Pokemon all have rule boxes. So on my EV VMAX, it says the VMAX rule. When your Pokemon VMAX is knocked out, your opponent takes three prize cards. So that is really important to know um, when you're working towards trying to beat your opponent. Um, if he only had three prize cards left, I would not want EV VMAX on my bench or on my active spot because if he gets knocked out, Neil would automatically win the game. So I'm going to go ahead and attack with G-Max Cuddle. Um, it takes three colorless energy and I have the required energy attached. Um, does 150 damage. During your opponent's next turn, if the defending Pokemon tries to attack, your opponent flips a coin. If Tails, that attack doesn't happen. So it, I've attacked and now it's Neil's turn. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a card. I'm not gonna play anything. What I'm gonna demonstrate with my rule box Pokemon, Charizard GX, is that when I use a GX attack, I can only use it once per turn, and then we'll see what happens if EVV Max is, or once per game, and we'll see what happens when EVV Max is knocked out. So first I have to flip for the effect of G Max Cuddle. If I flip heads, the attack still works, but I am using Dreadful Flames GX. So I have to flip my GX marker down to indicate that I've used my GX attack for the entire game. Heads, so the attack does work. 250 damage. EVV Max is knocked out. Discard an energy from each of your opponent's Pokemon. So Katie also has to discard an energy from her Flapple V as she advances him. I get to take one, two, three prize cards for knocking out a VMAX Pokemon. And now it's Katie's turn. Okay, so now it's my turn. Um, I'm not gonna play anything in my hand. Um, I am going to go ahead and use Wing Attack. It does 120 damage um, and it has no other text, so it just does a straight 120 damage. And Charizard GX now has 270 damage on him. He only has 250 HP, so he is knocked out. The rule box for GX Pokemon is that when Pokemon GX are knocked out, your opponent takes two prize cards. So Katie will take two prize cards two. as Charizard GX is knocked out. All right, in this video, we're gonna demonstrate the effects of a couple of special conditions. I'm going to go ahead and attack with my B drill using Poison Sting. It does 30 base damage and your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned. Now Mawile is actually resistant to grass, so it doesn't take any damage from the Poison Sting, but it is poisoned 
And so my attack will move us into the between turns phase, and Mawile takes 10 damage due to poison. Now Katie's turn will start. Okay, so here's my hand, and I don't have anything that I can heal special conditions or um, any damage. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and attack using Powerful Vice, since I do have a metal energy attached. Uh, powerful Vice does 20 base damage. Flip a coin. If heads, your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. It is heads. So Beedrill is paralyzed. So I turn him right or clockwise for paralysis. I go ahead and start my turn. Um, I don't really have anything I can use. And paralysis prevents you from attacking or retreating, but it only lasts one turn. So now that I end my turn and we move back into Pokemon Checkup, the paralysis is automatically recovered. Okay, in this scenario, we are going to demonstrate the special condition burn. So it is my turn and I'm going to go ahead and attack uh, with Toracat since I do have a fire energy attached. I'm going to use Fire Fang and it says your opponent's active Pokemon is now burned. It does 20 base damage, but Butterfree is weak against fire, so it does 40 base damage, and he is burned. All right, so I'm placing 40 damage and my burn marker. So now as we move into Pokemon Checkup, I need to do the step to resolve burn. So what happens when you're burned is you automatically take two more damage counters, so Butterfree's up to 60 damage now. And then you flip. So if I flip heads, the burn is resolved and I get to remove the burn marker. If I flip tails, the burn remains until I remove that special condition in some other way, or if I flip heads during the next Pokemon checkup after taking 20 more damage. It's tails, so Butterfree will remain burned for now. In this scenario, we are going to go ahead and demonstrate a couple more special conditions. So it is my turn to attack. Um, so I'm going to attack with Altaria. Um, I'm going to use Dragon Song since I have the necessary energy. It does 30 base damage. And then it says each defending Pokemon is now asleep. So Dusclops is now asleep. All right, so I'll turn Dusclops left or counterclockwise for sleep. As we move through Pokemon Checkup, I get to flip a coin. If heads, Dusclops wakes up. If tails, he remains asleep. He remains asleep. So what that means is for this turn and until he wakes up again, he cannot attack or retreat. All right, in this video, we're gonna demonstrate the effect of confusion. So I have Dusclops. He has one psychic energy attached. I'm gonna go ahead and use Confuse Ray. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. All right, so that was his attack. So... It's important to note that confusion does not do anything during Pokemon checkup. It's the only special condition that has no phase during Pokemon checkup. Yeah, so I can't flip forward or anything. Um, he is just simply confused. So then it starts my turn, so I go ahead and draw a card. Here's my hand, and I have nothing in my hand that can resolve confusion. Now, the really cool thing about confusion is you can retreat your Pokemon as normal. However, I don't have any basic Pokemon on my bench, so I can't retreat Altaria, or I would not have an active Pokemon. So. The other thing is you can attack, however, you have to flip to attack. So I'm going to walk through the steps of attacking during confusion. So first you have to select the attack that you're going to do. Um, I'm going to attempt um, Dragon Song, and now I'm going to flip to see if Dragon Song works. Tails, okay. so. When you flip tails during confusion, you do not get to follow through with the attack, so the attack does not work. And then, because you're confused, you hurt yourself. So you have to put three damage counters on your own Pokemon, and your turn ends. All right, 
In this video, we're going to demonstrate a couple of the ways to remove special conditions once they've been in effect. So I'm going to play the card Yellhorn, which is an item. Both active Pokemon are now confused. So we both turn our Pokemon upside down to represent that they are confused. However, my Clefable has an ability called Lunar Blessing. Once during your turn, if your active Pokemon has any psychic energy attached, you may heal 20 damage from it and it recovers from a special condition. So I can use that ability because there's no restrictions in the text of the ability. Clefable does have a psychic energy attached. He is my active Pokemon, so I can use that ability on himself to heal his confusion. I cannot attack, so I'm going to go ahead and end my turn. All right, so I'm going to start my turn drawing a card. Um, so another way that you can recover from special conditions is through evolution. So here's my hand, and I have Yanmega, the evolution of Yanma. So if I place him here, that heals his confusion. Um, I have no energy, so I end my turn. All right, so this video we're also going to demonstrate two of the other ways to remove special conditions so my clefable is actually starting out as burned i could retreat by paying an energy but i happen to have the stadium card fairy garden each pokemon that has any fairy energy attached to it both yours and your opponent's has no retreat cost so i'm going to go ahead and play that so that I can retreat without discarding an energy because Clefable does have a fairy energy attached. So I'm gonna retreat. Moving to the bench heals all special conditions. I'm gonna advance Grand Bull. Now I can't attack, but I can play Koga's Trap, which is a supporter card. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused and poisoned. All right, so we're going to confuse Yonmega and put a poison marker on him, and he takes 10 damage in between turns due to poison. So now it's the start of my turn. So I have a couple of options here to heal the conditions to potentially use Yanmega, and those are these item cards here. We've got full heal, your active Pokemon recovers from all special conditions, and then we also have Big Malasada, heal 20 damage and remove a special condition from your active Pokemon. Now, in this instance, I would definitely want to use full heal because if you look at the wording, only full heal takes both special conditions away. Now, it doesn't heal any damage, but he's no longer poisoned or confused, so then I can continue play as normal. Okay, in this video, we're gonna demonstrate winning through taking all prize cards. It's my turn, I'm ready to attack. I'm gonna go ahead and use my Incineroar's Flamethrower. He has two fire energy attached. It does 90 base damage and I have to discard a fire energy in order to use it. Unfortunately for Katie, her Parasect is weak against fire, so it takes double damage. 90 times two is 180 damage. Parasect only has 120 HP, so Parasect is knocked out. Parasect is not a rule box Pokemon, so I would only take one prize card normally. I only have a single prize card left, so as soon as I take it, I win the game because all of the prize cards have been taken. So in this video, we are going to demonstrate uh, what it looks like to win the game by benching your opponent or or them not having Pokemon to advance. So um, it is my turn. Um, I've already started my turn, so I'm gonna go ahead and attack with Luminion. Um, and I'm going to use Neon Trickery. It does 50 damage. I have the required energy attachment. Um, and then the text says, you may move an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon to one of their benched Pokemon. Um, but that's not really going to matter because it does 50 damage to Stunfisk, and Stunfisk is knocked out. Um, so even though, so then I, I do get to take a prize card, but even though I have prize cards left, Neil has no one left in play, so I automatically win the game. Okay, in this video, we're going to demonstrate what happens when one player is decked and thus loses the game. 
So it's my turn. I've already drawn, but I'm gonna play Bug Catcher, which is a supporter card. Draw two cards, flip a coin if heads, draw two more cards. So I'm gonna draw two cards from my deck and I actually have no more cards left in my deck. Now, because I drew those cards with the effect of Bug Catcher, I don't lose the game yet. But if I don't have any cards in my deck at the beginning of my next turn, I will lose. I can't really use these cards, and uh, Magnezone can't attack, so I end my turn. Okay, so then it's the start of my turn. Um, and I, mean, I can't really do anything um, with one energy, so I'm going to end my turn. All right, so now it's the beginning of my turn. I have no cards in my deck. I have to draw a card at the beginning of every turn, and since I can't, I am decked, and I instantly lose the game, even though I have other Pokemon in play, and Katie has prize cards that she hasn't taken. Hi, and thank you for watching our video. We are Higher Education. Play, learn. Read your cards carefully. He's knocked out. Colorless, Dragon. The middle Fair. era is 2002 to 2013. Good game.